Mr. Mayor, I can hear you now. We've got about Excellent. one more. Yeah, one more minute, and we'll I'll give you the cue, and we'll be ready to go. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Mr. Mayor, you're free to go whenever you'd like. Okay, I will uh, reconvene this council uh, study session. We have just come out of executive session, so uh, we are in an active meeting that was recessed, so I'm bringing us back from recess. And uh, we are going to do council liaison reports now. Uh, who is ready to go with council liaison reports? Who would like to start? Councillor Anderson? Yeah, I haven't had anything really since our last uh, report. Um, we got a planning commission at the end of this week, a little different timing, but uh, that's about it for me. Okay, Councillor Newton? Uh, yeah, we had a PAB meeting um, just kind of wrapping up everything that we uh, do for funding the last grant cycle. And September 17th, we start over again. So we're going back into the grant funding cycle. Be a little bit different for Tiger coming up because of our change in status. So I'll keep you posted on that. And I have been regularly attending the TYAC meetings uh, via Zoom. I missed yesterday's meeting. I don't know if um, Councillor Calderon was there, but maybe he can report on that. Other than that, uh, I don't have anything to report. So Councillor Newton, what you were referencing, I think for the public, this is just good for them to know that Excellent. this is gonna be the first year that we are a, a partial entitlement city ourselves, correct? That's correct. what you're that's referencing? Correct. Yes, that's correct. So. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be participating a little bit differently and some of the funds will come to us directly. Um, so it'll be exciting for us to determine how we wanna um, advance some of our priorities with those funds. So be exciting. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Calderon, why don't we go to you to follow up on the TYAC conversation? Yeah, so I was at their meeting on Monday and just a couple things first, there we're trying to improve our website on the city page because it hasn't been updated before i even got on the council so it's quite old so that's pretty important uh i brought up the point of helping out with the universal plaza designing uh stuff so hopefully a couple people will be interested in that and then uh another thing that they're doing is writing letters to senior citizens in the woodlands height assisted living area and they were discussing a sort of way to help students uh, that are in high school and older middle schoolers to help other students who are younger in this upcoming school year since it will be quite difficult with everyone being online. So hopefully they're trying to find a way that they can help connect and just offer uh, some advice, especially with everything being so much harder with it being online. Okay. Any Anything else to report? Anything else to report? Uh, no, that's it. All right. Uh, Council President Goodhouse? Yeah, I have a, a few things. Um, last week I attended the, uh, the National League of Cities Equitable Solutions Conference. Um, There's a lot of breakout sessions that were good topics. One of them, uh, it was recorded, and I'm trying to get a copy of it. It was a great discussion of different cities and how they're 
they're doing something similar to our, our safety transformation commission um, working on areas like that it was a great kind of uh, town hall discussion to see what other cities were doing how they were working on it one of the points they made that was really great i think that works for us is they were talking about that even though cities around them may have had items they put in place or commissions that each city has their own needs and it's good to hear from the voices of each community so even though we've you know people might say that well maybe you know steal from another city or do another city it's always good to have your city involved and hear what's going on in your city uh, another thing I've been working on and I've been talking with the mayor about it a bit is um, Nate McCoy with NAMAC is working on our, our RFP process and um, with them they have a, a document from the city of Portland that really kind of changes the RFP process and kind of, kind of gets really from the model of the lowest bidder and maybe gets rid of some of the, um, the barriers that minority owned companies have as far as bidding on projects or getting into that realm where some of them is designed right now where you have to have a certain amount of time you've you've been in business done a certain amount of contracts and that can be really a barrier for minority contracts so i put that organization in touch with staff and we're going to be working more to see if we can look at our rfp process the way we do bidding and maybe uh, open it up so we can get more minority contracts in place and maybe also maybe get away from the, the lowest bid model and maybe go with more quality uh, contracts sometimes or at least look at that process and also had a meeting with the TCAC last week and they're sending, we, I saw the email come through earlier today, they're sending a letter off to uh, TriMet Metro um, and to the city council uh, with their concerns about the hall station and, and with the light rail along with the uh, TTAC. They already sent theirs um, off earlier in the week and, that, and both those committees have had discussions about sending letters and their concerns. Okay. Who am I missing? Councillor Lube, have you got to go? No, um, but what I would say is I haven't had any board and commission meetings, but um, last week, Councillor Newton and I actually met with um, TriMet um, and Councillor Dirksen, and we had, um, we spoke a lot about our concerns with the Hall Street Station and to echo um, a lot of what the community was saying. Um, so it was really nice to have that follow-up letter to um, also express a lot of the concerns for the Hall Street Station, but it was um, nice to hear. And they understand that, you know, we have a lot of concerns and um, I think they're doing their best to listen. But we, we're gonna continue to push. Did anything come out of that discussion? I mean, what, I'll ask, that can be directed to you and Councillor Newton. Um, anything that that we can look look positively towards? Well, the the plan that they showed us a revision they said was based on the plan that our staff submitted to TriMet in June, hoping to hear back in August, and now TriMet saying September. So we asked a lot of questions about it and got some you know some of our questions answered. I think the way Councillor Lube and I left it was. We were looking forward to the presentation in September when you know we all would be able to look at it and maybe they'll incorporate some of the things that that we uh, asked about while we were doing the review and I, I, don't, I don't know that staff has seen the it has it had a meeting with TriMet yet either but um, anyway so we just said hey we're looking forward to more information in September That's how we left it and the context for this meeting was related to their interest in uh, or the the campaign's interest in obtaining your support for the the um, get moving 2020 measure correct 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 yes okay <clears throat> all right um the uh only update that i have for everybody is uh i just want to bring all of you up to speed on a conversation and kind of brief you um, with a discussion that the governor had with the mayors of the largest cities in the state and I was invited to that uh, discussion and um, you know I don't know the exact numbers but probably 90 percent of the population of the state was covered by the you know 30 or 40 mayors that were in the discussion um, and this was yesterday evening and it was really focused on COVID-19 and I think some things that and some of this was related to the information she released in her press conference last Friday about 
um, what the transmission rates of COVID-19 mean right now related to public education and, and children returning to classrooms. Um, and right now the modeling indicates that we wouldn't meet the, the targets to get uh, 3 through 12 back into grades 3 through 12 back into the classroom for more than 200 days and maybe longer. So that's essentially the whole, I mean, that'd be the whole school year. Um, Cause if I recall, I think the school year is 180 days or thereabouts and we're about, we're about to start school. So I'm, I'm doing the easy math today. Um, given that, uh, what, what she was really trying to seek guidance on from all of the mayors and also ask for our support and ask for our entire city council's uh, support uh, to push the messaging around uh, like strictly following mask guidelines um, and the social distancing. And I wanna just emphasize that because at this point, it, this is now down to, we either cha have a dramatic change or we're not gonna be getting kids back in the classroom in person this li likely the school i mean the math is not that hard for the epidemiologist to do um, they can tell on a week by week basis what the transmission rate is and and they know if it stays at that trajectory what that's going to mean and right now we've got a pretty consistent transmission rate with the way we're all behaving um, and if we if we change our behavior dramatically such that we're even more stringently following the guidelines um, and and frankly the events that continue to be from a contact tracing perspective the events that are most problematic are large backyard or medium-sized backyard gatherings uh, weddings in fact on the national news you can see I, I think there today there was a big story about a wedding um, these are the events that the contact tracers are continuously um, continuously finding our issues. I think it's really interesting that they're not, the contact tracers are not coming back to a lot of other kinds of events, including protests and stuff. That's not, that doesn't, I mean, it, part of it speaks to the fact that I think people are outside. I think groups have been pretty careful about both social distancing and also wearing masks during those events. Um, but I, I just wanted to brief all of you. Um, we, I specifically asked the governor directly on this video conference for unified messaging so that we're all saying the same things. Uh, I actually asked her, because some of what she was saying, um, I, I had to ask the question, are you advocating for a more robust enforcement of the, I mean, I don't think we can put our police department under the strain of trying to enforce mask ordinances or laws, but I will tell you the city of Bend has imposed a civil infraction for not wearing a mask. Um, and it's changed, according to the mayor of Bend, it's changed the conversation to some extent because now, um, you know, younger people I guess it, it got the attention of groups of people who had been less into or inclined to listen to to the concerns and has made it a little more real for them. Um, and she was citing that they've seen the most change in behavior with kind of like the under, under 25 crowd uh, with that ordinance. So I don't know if that's something we want to consider. I wasn't intending to bring that up necessarily as a we should do this type of thing but those are the kinds of things that i think are under consideration and again all of this has to do with um how to keep the economy open and businesses open and get children back in school so that's that's all this is about it's not about you know wanting to come up with more uh you know hard-nosed restrictions or anything else it's just sort of the the basic science and epidemiology of the transmission of the disease and the fact that we'd like to get our K-12 students back in school. So I don't know, does anybody have questions about that? That was a lot of rambling for me, but I think it's important to, for all of you to kind of have a sense of where the governor is on this and, and what the major public health issue is. 
Mr. Mayor, Councillor Newton, I heard the same information on the LOC call last Friday. Maybe some of the rest of you were on that call. And it occurred to me that, um, you know, I think the messaging is important and, and are there things we can be doing as a city? I know I live near a couple of parks and there's signs posting saying playgrounds, people aren't supposed to be on them, yet they are. I don't think we wanna make our parks maintenance folks run around and tell people to put masks on when they've got other things to do. But I, I, would, I would support, you know, increasing the messaging. The word I heard on that LOC call was that if everybody really followed um, the criteria really strictly, we could advance that school opening by, I mean, I think they were talking about maybe sometime between November and January, if everybody really followed the, the uh, directions carefully, um, we could we could really make a difference in terms of the transmission rate. So I would I would support, you know, whatever we think is practical in terms of increasing messaging to get to get folks to comply. So Councilor, you, you bring up an interesting point and one that I'll I'll uh, I guess speak to a little bit is some some cities are handing masks out to like they have their park like if park staff observe people not using masks they're handing them out. Uh, police departments, some community service officers in police departments are out handing masks out when they see people without masks um, as a way to say, hey, you're not, you're not doing your part, here's your mask, or here's a free mask. Um, so I don't know if we wanna you know, consider that, but Councilor Newton, thank you for reminding me of, of that as a possibility. What, what is the rest of the council since we've got a little bit of time here uh, before the business meeting starts, and I don't know that we've got more business, what does the what does the council think about um, you know either taking more aggressive enforcement action? Which I just I don't think we can I don't think we have the resources to enforce. But what about putting the staff that are public facing uh, in a position where they can give people free masks? as a reminder, education, and a solve the problem in the moment type of approach. Any thoughts on that? Everybody's got a thought. Okay, we'll go, we'll just go around the room. Councillor Calderon. Yeah, obviously, um, I really want school to open. You guys are looking at my school year right here, just Zoom meetings. Uh, that's not very exciting. Uh, I'd rather so much be in school, and I really think that we, we should be increasing our messaging on masks because uh, even a couple months ago, people who were really preaching wearing masks, I can see them on their Instagram stories and whatnot, all just like a little bit more relaxed with the rules, which is not what, so that's not what they should be doing. And I think that if we can really up our messaging, it'll, it'll hopefully prove effective. Council President Goodhouse. I like the idea of uh, if our if our staff or, or police or the public um, works or parks, if they have a, a mask on and can hand them out, that'd be a great subtle way of your, your mask up. My question is, do we do we have enough of those or do we have a, a budget to get enough of those? Or, or I guess maybe we're not looking at large supply, but I like that that way rather than doing the, the strong approach. I love that where, you know, an officer could easily just hand them and say, hey, here's a mask. Um, make sure you wear it or a Parts. I was making the leap that, given that we're offering free masks to businesses, my hope was that we had enough masks to uh, to sort of offer for this purpose. But maybe that's. I mean, I don't think we're going to be giving away thousands a week or anything. Yeah. Councilor Lube. Okay, Councilor Lube. Um, I I would agree with supporting stronger messaging. I think you know a lot of people, including myself at times, have fatigue over this. You know, it's it's hard to be passionate about it every day every day especially when you see people not complying and i know you know we are doing our best with the parks and i would happily support you know the police handing it out and even the park staff but i think um, for a lot of park staff it would also potentially be controversial with people um, being confrontational and so i would also want to support any um, staff who don't have any sort of like de-escalation training just to be able to provide them guidance on how to respond um, because it can be an uncomfortable situation if you're not used to that kind of conflict so i want to make sure that we would be supporting our staff 
with a position that we would be putting them in, even if it's just handing out a mask. I think, you know, like none of us would be offended, but I, I think there's that potential for conflict. And so I just want to make sure that they would have the tools um, in order to manage that situation. Councilor Newton? Yeah. You're back on the mute. Sorry. I know. There we go. Um, I keep doing it. Uh, so I support what Councillor Lube said. I guess how I would look at it is if we made the mask available for staff and then they were in a situation where they felt like, you know, it would it would be, you know, people would be receptive. I'm a little bit concerned about saying to staff, you know, if you see somebody without a mask, you got to give them one of these free ones. But I definitely think it would be good for them to have masks available and they could they could hand them out to folks that they see that aren't wearing them. So that would be my thought. If I could channel the governor for a moment, I would say that um, that that kind of uh, all of our collective concern about being bold about this is potentially what's going to keep the kids out of school longer. But I, I, I just want to make sure that we're acknowledging that tension. Councillor Anderson? Uh, rather than confronting them, maybe, maybe they could have a free mask giveaway at, say, Joanne's or the Bymar parking lot or something and uh, just just say, hey, because I, I sincerely think some of these old folks don't have masks and they don't order from Amazon and they just go about their business thinking it's going to be over in a week and it's lingered on and on. So I, th I think it's a good idea. One more thing really quick. I think a lot of it I see around the parks here is people have He's masks. Imagining. They're not wearing them. And so I concur with you, Mr. Mayor, you know, about it's being as bold as we're comfortable. But I see a lot of people and they're just not wearing the mask. So I think if people don't have a mask, we want to give them the opportunity to get one. But it's uh, to, to echo Councillor Lube, I think people are having some mask fatigue and they take them off because they get too warm or whatever and they don't put them on. And so I think really strong messaging would help and also encouraging people that we see or our staff sees out there to, to wear masks. That's, that's yeah, a good that's idea. Good I, had, I had two thoughts and, the, and one might be kind of hard. I didn't know if there might be a way to get some of the parks, have a little just a, a mask station where people could, could grab one or at the least maybe, and, I, and maybe I haven't been to all the parks, maybe there's already there, but if we do some laminated signs just around that says, please wear a mask in parks. Just a, a reminder that you know when you enter, people can kind of see that you're supposed to be wearing it. Maybe put it around the the um, pavilions or things like that, where at least a laminated sign that says, you know, masks are required. Please wear a mask. And here is one, Councilor Lube. We we have that. Um, we have that at, at many of the parks, and I had a resident reach out to me and ask for more to go at Summer Lake Park, and the park staff has done that. I will also say um, I've reported a lot of vandalism as I've been walking through Cook Park. These signs are vandalized pretty regularly, so staff is having to go and, and do replacements. So my concern with just having like a free-for-all is that someone who could be upset about this could literally take them all and throw them away or do whatever with it. And so I would prefer more the approach if the park staff saw someone not wearing it and you know being within that six foot distance to hand it out because I just I, I think the free for all approach could be dangerous. And you know, Councillor Lou or Councillor Newton is saying she sees people in the parks just not wearing their mask. But I also occasionally see people when we're out on the walks who just don't have one. Um, so it it would provide an opportunity for park staff to, to hand them out if they were there. So we've just had a pretty significant discussion on this. Um, I, I think the city manager and other staff have been listening. City manager Wine, um, perhaps this is something the leadership team could, and, and maybe it shouldn't just be about handing out masks, but w what if anything can, uh, can our city do to try to be more bold on this point? Um, and and figure out how to help bend the curve further so that Emilio doesn't have to go to Zoom school for 20, 220 days. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, these conversations are very similar to conversations leadership team has had and we will continue to. So um, we're looking forward, Mr. Mayor, if you have, if there is 
um, updated messaging or um, stricter messaging that we that we can use hearing about that and then the the ideas that have been offered related to face coverings we've been we'll, we'll take the ideas that you've already shared and some of them as Councillor Lube noted we are already implementing so thank you yes we will take these back and work on them and I guess I'm not I'm not suggesting we do this now necessarily and I'm not sure there's support to do it but City Attorney Rahala, how hard would it be for us to create an ordinance that required wearing masks that became a, a civil violation if you didn't when you were supposed to be? Is that a, um, can you give us an idea of how quickly we could, if, if things either get worse or we decide we need to take that action, is that something we could work through our processes relatively quickly? It absolutely is. So we have uh, in our ordinance right now, uh, we have the ability to set rules for uh, conduct on city property. And so we actually do have a rule in place. It needs to be updated, but we do have a rule uh, requiring masks on all city or on in all city buildings um, for visitors. Well, this would be broader. This would be the entire city. Yeah, so we could certainly expand it. Um, right okay. now, I forget what the penalty is.
Okay. Uh, we need Council President Goodhouse back online. There he is. Okay. I will call this uh, City Council and Local Contract Review Board meeting to order. Deputy City Recorder Patton, please call roll. Councillor Newton? Here. Councillor Lou? Here. Councillor Anderson? Here. Mayor Snyder? Here. Youth Councillor Calderon? Here. Council President Goodhouse? Here. Okay. We will uh, move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll display the flag and everyone can participate on their own. Okay, uh, let's move on to uh, council or staff. Do we have any non agenda items? Mr. Mayor, staff have no non-agenda items this evening. All right. On uh, thank you. On public comment, uh, written public comments were due by 4:30 p.m. today, and call-in questions will be taken via telephone for agenda item number 3C. Phone in public comment. The public may call in now to get in the queue. The call-in number is 503-966-4101 which is displayed on the screen. Again, call in number 503-966-4101. Let's move on to follow up to previous public comments. City Manager Wine, any follow up? No, Mr. Mayor. All right, uh, Deputy Recorder Patton, uh, was there any written comment received? I believe there were two, am I correct about that? Yes, we received two items, both about the Public Safety Transformation Commission, one from John Lilligren and Michael Bruin. So, Council, uh, I, those were received uh, over the last week or so. I want to make sure that um, those you've seen those. Have all councilors seen those? Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right, so that the we'll we'll keep the the content of those in mind as we're reviewing the um, Public Safety Transformation Commission. And uh, Mr. Nola, do we have any callers in the queue? Uh, Mr. Mayor, at this point in time, we do not have any callers in the queue. All right, well, you let us know if that changes. We're going to move on to the consent agenda, but if we get a caller, please let us know. I sure will. All right, so we're going to move on to the consent agenda, which is used for routine items, including receipt of council meeting calendars and approval of contracts or intergovernmental agreements. Information on each item is available on the city's website in the packet for the meeting. These items may be enacted in one motion without separate discussion. Council members may request that an item be removed by motion for discussion and separate action. Tonight we have uh, multiple meetings uh, worth of minutes. We're considering a couple of contracts, one for uh, pavement management program crack seal and the other for uh, identifying an owner's representative for the cash reservoir project. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Councillor Newton, I'll move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Councillor President, good as a second. Okay. All right, it's been moved and seconded. City Recorder, please conduct a roll call vote. Councillor Newton? Aye. Councillor Loop? Yes. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Mayor Snyder? Yes. Council President Goodhouse? Yes. Okay, the consent agenda is adopted unanimously. We'll move on to item number four, which is to uh, receive the Public Safety Transformation Commission update and discuss next steps. Mr. Nullup, I guess I should just briefly check with you. Did we get any callers in that interim time period? 
Uh, no callers, Mr. Mayor. Okay. City Manager Wine, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councilors. Um, I'm Marty Wine, your City Manager. Tonight on your agenda, you have um, an update on the proposal to create the Public Safety Transformation Commission. You have had discussions about the creation of this commission beginning um, from about mid-June on um, in response to calls for greater racial equity and also understanding of our city services and practices. So um, tonight we're presenting a revised proposal based on the feedback that we heard and considered at your August 11th council meeting. Um, I'll say a little bit about what comes after, but I think that I'll just recap on August 11th the council provided comments about the proposal those are reflected in tonight's draft that you're reviewing um, the issues about the proposal were summarized by Mayor Snyder on the night of the meeting and then council had a discussion and uh, count, Mayor Snyder you pulled out count for council discussions issues that were needing to be addressed based on all of the feedback and correspondence that had been received up to that point and there were hundreds of items of correspondence and also um, feedback solicited on the um, Engaged Tiger site about the, the proposal and about the selection process. So um, what you discussed back on August 11th were comments from the Community for Community or Committee for Community Engagement, the Tiger Police Officers Association feedback, and broader community feedback. And so staff have taken all of the notes and the discussion that you had back two weeks ago and have revised the proposal um, in keeping with the comments that you made. Um, Tonight, we don't have a specific staff recommendation except we're hoping for additional council input and discussion about this proposal and to hear from you that if it's in a forum that you want to move it forward to direct staff to take steps to begin a selection caucus process, an education campaign as you noted two weeks ago, community academy design and, and education in that realm and also finding a facilitator to help with and begin the work. Um, given that you've received additional feedback um, today and also through the public comment that was referenced earlier, um, you may also wish to change the proposal further or uh, give more input about what you'd like to see in the Transformation Commission. So um, I, I want to provide you with the most time for discussion. So I can go through the changes that we made, but our effort to uh, publish a revised Transformation Commission proposal was for you to be able to see it and see your changes reflected. So I'd like to hand it back to you for discussion and for, for your input. So Council, let's start with um, just review of the document and make sure that it represents what everybody's common understanding was of the edits. I think it was sent out uh, to, now to, ask, to ask for that feedback, but I just want to confirm, is there any, any last comments from Council um, on whether what is there and present is what we had asked for in our prior discussions. Anyone have comments about that, Councilor Newton? We can't hear you, unfortunately, Councilor Newton. Still okay, can't hear you. Still there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Um, the one question I had, and, and I think this reflects what we came up with, although I do have several comments to discuss later. Uh, the second, on the under definitions, there's reference to an attachment, and I didn't see an attachment. So I, I just, anyway, I just point that out. So I didn't review it if there was one. Is that a hyperlink? Is that a hyperlink, City Manager Wine, or was it intended to be? Um. It was intended to be a hyperlink, and what one of the I guess there was some discussion last time about a set of terms that needed definition, and I think what you'll see in the definition section of the current draft is that um, we um, were referencing a glossary that was developed by RacialEquityTools.org, and many of the terms that you all discussed last time needing definition um, have ideas or starting points about ways to define them in there, so we will hyperlink it in the final. And also, I guess I would say, I think that there's some, uh, there was some hope in the redraft to allow the commission to develop its own working definitions rather than come up with a, a proscribed set of meanings for things. Okay. Any other any other uh, comments about whether or not this represents what we were 
asking for. I think on a whole it does. Um, count, okay, I saw some thumbs ups, but then Councillor Lube, you have a comment? Yeah, I, I was trying to figure out, I, I you know, did another deep dive into this, I think, with a fresh set of eyes. And so, and I, I tried to find a, a previous version to see if I was, if I had just missed it previously. Um, but I was curious kind of um, about one of the topics. I was wondering if we could just address it and see if anyone else um, wants to address it with me. Um, just the general topic of the police budget and considering the defund police narrative. Um, I just, I have some general concerns about that. And I think, you know, the, the signal that it sends out um, as far as the intent of it. Um, I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think this um, transformation commission is charged with really looking at policies and seeing if there are other ways to do things. I think our community was pretty clear about supporting additional police. And so I worry about the narrative of saying, considering defunding the police, because that's certainly not my intent. The intent, you know, my intent is to look at the services that are provided. Where did that come from? Because I don't remember writing that. Um, okay, so it wasn't just me, because I read it, and I, I was like, where did this come from? Well, yeah, I don't read either. <laughs> Whoa, lots of hands. Okay. Uh, okay, good. Oh, thanks you, for making you, me feel better because I thought I was going crazy. Youth <laughs> Calderon, do you want to say something about that? Uh, yeah, I think I saw that in the last last draft as well. Uh, I was very surprised by it because we haven't had any council discussion around defunding the police. And obviously from our levy that just passed, I don't think that voters wanted to defund the police. So I was so unsure where that came from. And I agree with Councillor Lou. Yeah, I, I would uh, move to strike it. Okay, City Attorney Rahala, you you look like you, you popped your camera on and you're ready to speak. So, so, <laughs> yes, so counsel, add to the dialogue. I know the, <laughs> I know the answer to that question, Council. Um, that was actually from the Reimagine Oregon website. Uh, oh. so at the last Council meeting, uh, Council had directed that we pull some of the items from the Reimagine Oregon website and for possible consideration. So that was where I came from. And was that whole section, the police budget, I know everybody's got questions, but let me try to help clarify so that we can focus our questions. Was, was there an edit or was the entire section police budget added? So police budget was something that council had brought up at the last discussion, and then the Consider Defend Police narrative was pulled directly from the Reimagine Oregon website. Okay. I think, um, I mean, my, so I, I'm gonna just make a statement and hopefully move us off of this. Um, if, if I get this right and the council can give, give some thumbs ups, but um, I believe that our discussion that's been meaningful on this point has been about whether there are certain things, and it's not about defunding the police, it's about um, whether or not there are a few things on the margin that might be dealt with better by a different, either a different set of or train, you know, different group of people that are trained differently, but that that doesn't involve, uh, de our police department's already been, um, you know, challenged with staffing, and, and that's, that's really not the conversation that we're having. Um, so it, it, if that got removed, the comment about, you know, should we have uh, some other response oper you know, option, I think that would need to be added back in. I'm looking to see if I can find that now. But I think that's, um, yeah, it's in the deployment of resources, establish a non-police non response for mental health, homelessness, and other non-criminal calls. Um, and again, that's a that's just a topic. It's not that that's what the commission's going to do. It's that they need to evaluate that. But to me, that that is the main action that we would be taking from the the national, if you want to call it, the national narrative on defund police. Um, I don't think we're engaging in a conversation about removing money from our policing budget. And I guess I just does the whole council. Does it, does anyone on the council? Everybody agree? No. Council President, you want to make a statement? 
I think what the council said was that we were going to look at it at in a quarter, um, re looking at our budget, getting comments from the community, and see if that maybe some resources might go to other things that may help in this aspect. But I don't think we ever really said we were going to defund or any of that. And I know that the word defund really means allocate resources elsewhere. So we were going to look at that elsewhere, but never really put that in this part. And I also want to know if there was anything else that was added that maybe we missed that um, after that conversation, if if staff added anything else from that from that side in there that we you know we'd be good to know that as well that we might have missed in our I mean I I'll city attorney Rahal, I'll just share I've looked at this thing so many times now that it's hard to start to see changes um, like that one I I didn't um, pick up on that one change I mean I've been through probably 20 drafts of this so it's, yeah it gets hard to pick up on those that's why I'm curious if anything else might have been add, added that the city attorney or staff might have added that we, from that site or from that conversation last time. Yeah, there was uh, actually the last item on the list was an addition uh, of the Reimagine Oregon website to ensure that all personnel are confined with sanctuary uh, ICE. Um, that is state statute. The Tigard Police Department, of course, uh, complies with state statute, um, but because it was a topic of concern on the website. We did uh, pull that also. Uh, Councilor Newton, we'll get, I'll get to you in just a second. On, on the one the city attorney just raised, um, it seems like we could just say ensure, that one could just be, you know, ensure that we're complying with the ORS and the Tiger Police Policy and not get into, you know, discussion about sanctuary and ICE. Those again are th I mean we have to comply with the statute and the policy anyway um, so I don't that's my thought uh, Councilor Newton go ahead uh, yeah really quick first of all let me say I have no interest in defunding the police um, and I when we go through the discussion I have some thoughts about you know how we might arrange the topic areas my understanding, and I must have missed this at our last meeting, was that what we were trying to do was reflect the topic areas that we heard from the community. I think the emails that I read, all the emails I read, I think there were two or three that mentioned defunding police. Not a fan, don't think it's a good idea, but I think it was on the list because it was something that was raised. Unfortunately, um, when you look at this, I can see how somebody in the community might think, so did everybody that wrote in say that? That's not the case. But So I'm a little bit concerned about even, even la adding that last item because the, the, the board or committee might come up with some, of the, some areas that they want to pursue on their own as they're doing their work. But I thought that we were, we, what we were starting with was the topics that we heard from the community. So I'm, I'm wondering a little bit if we might want to limit to that, limit it to that. Um, so yeah, yeah, that yeah, would be my thought. And Councilor Newton, I think that's a good call out. And yes, that is essentially what we, what we tried to do. And my interpretation of what people that were saying you know, defund in with the people that actually use those words where I translated that into the positive of what is it that we're going to do differently, uh, potentially. And that's how that, I mean, that's how I translated that into action in Tigard. Um, I don't think we heard enough people say, I just want you to abolish the police department or anything else to, to put that on the, on the, um, point of discussion and none of us would support that so Correct. it's Correct. it's not I don't think that's an appropriate discussion um, and I oh I know what I was gonna, the other thing I was gonna say is one of the pieces of feedback and why the staff did do what we asked them to do is that we did have multiple comments on the last round of the transformation Commission um, referencing the reimagine Oregon information and website so from that perspective i think we are being responsive um to the feedback but i don't think i don't think the one about sanctuary and ice needs to be written the way it is um necessarily and that if the, if the action is to just make sure we're following the ors and our own policy then we should just state that yeah um, and i was going to suggest if that's something that came up 
perhaps those things could be listed separately. So it, people are really clear that that's where that came from. Um, and so that's just a thought because having those there, I, I got a little bit confused. I thought I didn't remember seeing anybody bring that up. I like that proposal. Council President Goodhouse, go ahead. Only suggestion I would make is maybe we, just, if we're going to reference anything, reference our welcoming city, which also references the ORS code. How would you, I'm trying to think about how you would work that into this. How would you work that into that? Um, or ensure, ensure that, that our personnel are following our own our own welcoming our, our, city plus the ORS and police policies? Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, Councillor Newton, I like your proposal to move that and the other one into a section that references the fact that these came from uh, Reimagine yeah. Oregon. Is that what you're proposing? Yeah, and, and, and the commission or the committee may decide to pursue those or not. I mean, if somebody raised those as something that, that we ought to look at, but if then they're separate, then the, the group can decide um, uh, what, how we move forward. And I, once we get into the meat of the discussion on this topic, I have um, some suggestions about how we organize the topics. Okay, so city attorney, well actually let me check with the council. Can everybody support taking those two sections that came from Reimagine Oregon and putting them into a section that references that and therefore the commission can decide whether they're going to address them or not. Do we have support for that? Thumbs. Oh, Councilor Lubes, not so sure. Councilor President I, Goodhouse, uh, that's not a thumb, so you want to speak? I was going to say, uh, I agree with, with Councilor Lube. I think taking the word defund police out, I mean, none of us have the intention, and I don't want to start the committee on that that path that they decide to do it. So yeah, I, I guess those words I thought that out. was a foregone conclusion. We were taking defund out anyway. Okay. I would also just say I think it's repetitive if we're addressing it in another area saying you know are there alternatives to um, you know uh, the way we um, address mental health crisis that comes up and calls in it just sort of feels repetitive because I think that's the intent of um, the defund narrative and so my feeling is does it really need to be listed twice and again the um, striking it, as long as we strike that out um, I'm okay with it but it still feels sort of repetitive if we're addressing it in two different areas where the police budget is really broad but we're being specific about what we're asking them to do in the other area so that would be my only comment yeah I, I, I actually don't know that it my personal opinion is probably that it that whole that section city attorney I appreciate you adding that based on our feedback or staff I appreciate that but I think the way we're seeing it fit and how it fits into our overall scheme I don't know that we need it um, so then the question would be do we just leave the one about um, our welcoming city stuff on its own or do we put that in its own section about reimagine Oregon I mean I don't think it, that one's a, not a, it's not a to me it's not a really controversial uh, topic to say are we following our own policies and Oregon statute and our own welcoming cities provision so could that just stay on its own at the at the other societal considerations at the bottom thumbs thumbs up okay Councillor Newton you okay with that I didn't see your thumb oh yeah I was trying to figure out what you were saying <laughs> Yeah, what I'm proposing, what I'm proposing is that we, based on what everything I've heard you guys say, that we just remove the entire police budget line that was added in that whole section, and that we leave the ensure all personnel are complying with, but it would say our welcome that city of Tigers welcoming city provisions um, required by OS 181A.820 and Tigers Police Policy 428 just leave that section at the end of other societal considerations that's the proposal for now that's fine okay I know you're probably got a whole reorganization scheme okay got it I I can I get why you're <laughs> why you're having the 
reaction you're having because you've got a whole new plan. I get it. Um, so at the, let's transition, if everybody's okay with this, let's transition to a conversation about our overall um, thoughts around the, the proposal and whether we're ready to move it forward. I also, as we're starting this conversation, I want to squarely lay out there the um, very clear feedback. I had about a 45-minute conversation with the uh, Target Police Officers Association Executive Board today, um, and actually with the Chief of Police earlier today as well. Um, and there is uh, the the TPOA uh, feedback is. Um, they feel very strongly that this should be structured in, as an advisory body and not as a, you know, as a set up as a decision making body. We've had that discussion at least once and maybe twice, but they have strong enough feelings about that that I, I want to make sure that those are raised and clearly being considered as we're having our our dialogue tonight. So if you can include your thoughts on whether that's set up right, you know, if, if the current proposal is set up the way we want it to be, or if um, if enough uh, city councilors agree that this should be set up structurally differently than it is proposed, that we get that out there. And I, I want to just make sure that that is a piece of information that everybody hears as we're starting the dialogue. So um, let's start with Youth Councilor Calderon. What are your what are your thoughts on the on the overall proposal? Other changes you would make? Any feedback? No, I think the proposal is really good. Just the removing the defunding of the police then everything I've seen is in agreement with what I've been believing and what I've heard council talk about. So it's a good proposal. Councillor Newton, I'm ready for whatever you got coming. Okay, I had um, conversations with members of the TPOA e-board this morning too after um, reading their proposal and I've been thinking a lot about this. Um, I continue to be struck with what I don't know about how people in our community experience things differently from me. I want a community that is safe where people feel heard and people feel equally treated. And so, as you all know me, I'm interested in the conversation. So, I'm interested in um, having a, an, um, a place or a, you know, some structure around a community conversation about how we provide police services and then in the future more community services um, so people do feel safe and heard and equally treated. Um, I was thinking about the name. I'm not particularly attached to Transformation Commission, and I know there's some um, some valid concerns on the part of the TPOA. And I was thinking about the committees that we have in the city, and the only uh, committee that we call a commission is the Planning Commission, and they actually do have legal authority to make some de make decisions. So we have the budget committee and the park board. And so I was thinking maybe a more appropriate title might be the public safety advisory board or the public safety board or something like that. Because I think, you know, it is supposed to be advisory. So that's my thought, something like that to send that message. Um, the other thing that's um, sort of, I've been a little bit um, concerned about as we move forward doing work with the committees that I, I have in the past, there are some things, uh, topics that were raised that were really clear on their state or federally mandated. There are some things, you know, we could move to take action on some of those, but we need to identify that. So I think uh, we ought to separate, separate out the topic areas based on what's actionable by the city, in other words, where we can make a policy change or a decision, what would require a state or federal action, maybe something they want to talk about, but really clear there. And then I think there are two or three things I kind of lost track that are contract or bargainable issues, and I think those ought to be articulated separately too. I also think that it might benefit the committee and everybody moving forward if 
we, a couple of members of council and maybe some representatives of the police department could go through and articulate these more clearly because some of the things, especially in the policy area, for example, the no-knock warrant, we already don't do that. So some, I think it might provide the, um, the committee a good background in terms of really fleshing out the issues and how we move forward in terms of presenting them to them. I think uh, they could learn a lot from, from that input and we could have a good status on where we are as a community and where we might benefit from dis some discussions on that. So um, the other thing is I heard feedback on the youth, having youth on the committee. Um, I worked with youth in our community for years and I was surprised to hear that there were youth in our community that uh, that um, were not as supportive as I thought they were of the uh, school resource officer in the current the, the current um, iteration we have it in. And so I think it's important that we find a way to um, include youth in this because there are some things that um, that they would be involved in and could have some feedback feedback on. I'm open to if people have other suggestions, but primarily because, again, of what I'm learning, I, I don't know, I think it's important to have their voice as well. So I'll stop there and, you know, may have some more comments later, but those are just kind of my high level um, comments right now. So Councilor, I'm going to make sure that I'm helping to frame this for the rest of the council mm -hmm. um, because this question of whether it's an advisor, like to me, okay, you talked about changing the name of it, um, and that's that's sort of one piece to it. But that yeah. also implies that, like the way this is conceived now, um, and we had a debate and discussion about this, right. the direction would be that if they get to consensus that the direction is that the, that it be implemented if it's legal and there was consensus, um, oh, okay. which, which implies that, that they are making decisions and have some level of control. Now, what the, what the check and balance there is is the number of members of the commission and what their roles are in the city and in the public um, sort of forces consensus in a way that should protect against any sort of really untoward or crazy outcomes and we've also said that the council has the right to override but I think it's really important I mean this is a very fundamental question and I want to point out to the entire council that you know it's more than just adopting a name change if we if we change this to an advisory board which you kind of you you propose um, that would really change potentially the um, the decision. I, I assume you then would be saying that would go along with, if you're calling it an advisory board, we would be changing the decision making process or removing that and making it an advisory an advisory board. Well, my error because I thought all of their recommendations were coming to council. So I, I was more along the line of saying the name ought to reflect what we're having them do. So I agree, the name ought to reflect what we're having them do. But my understanding was any, I mean, things that can be changed by the city manager, things that would have that, how that would happen anyway, um, you know, like the police department makes policy changes to the police department, that doesn't need a, a board or committee um, change. But so I guess maybe that's the confusion. There are certain things that wouldn't come to the council anyway, um, but if they're, um, you know, so you get what I'm saying? I'm thinking more about the major things that would come to the council, like our boards and committees. So maybe I'm splitting hairs, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'm, no, just, I'm just I'm checking just to make sure that, that we have the decision-making part now. And I mean, you're now making me question what's in the, What's in the draft before us, uh, staff? Did we did we change that decision making um, direction? I'm also. Council, it's still the, it's still the same. It's under uh, commission work plan. It's the last paragraph. Decision making will strive for consensus. So it says uh, when the commission reaches a consensus that 
that decision will be implemented. And then if there's no consensus, then it goes to council with a recommendation. Okay, thank you for, uh, it, it looks like it's been moved. So that's I, perhaps maybe a draft to go. So I don't, I didn't, I couldn't quite locate it where I was looking for it, but I see it now. Thank you, city attorney Rahala. Um, so Councillor Newton, do you see that, you see that section, the last paragraph of the commission work plan section? I do, I do. So that's a fundamental change. Right. Councillor Lube. Well, I, I just wanted to respond to this topic in particular, and, and maybe um, City Attorney Rahala can um, chime in if I'm interpreting this incorrectly. But, you know, it says when the action item, or um, when it's within the authority of the Chief of Police or City Manager to implement, it will be implemented as soon as practicable. So based on that, it, if it was a routine business decision, it wouldn't come before us anyway. And anything that would require council approval would automatically come to us, even if they had consensus. Does that help clarify the differentiation? That's correct. So if it was within the authority of the chief or the city manager, then that would, if there was consensus, it would not come to council. It would be implemented at the staff level. If there was no consensus, and those two were the decision makers, then that would come to council. And if it required a budget action, collective bargaining, uh, council decision, those are um, recommendations to council that would then be carried out in the appropriate way, either budget, uh, collective bargaining, or council action. And not to run this into ground, but it's probably the planner in me, because in planning, there are certain things, certain decisions that the director can make, and certain things go to the planning commission, and they're final there unless they're appealed. So I differentiated it that way. So um, they don't actually have, if it's a council, it goes to a higher level, they don't actually have approval authority. So again, I, I'm not saying this doesn't necessarily reflect what we talked about. It's just that there's a, a, an arena where they don't have um, final approval. So maybe we should move on and other people can speak and, and you know see where we, we land. But I just felt like it should accurately reflect their decision-making authority. And maybe it does, so. Okay, Council President Goodhouse. Yeah, the way on that issue, I, I think I'd made the recommendation before. I, I'd like to see it more advisory um, rather than a, a committee and decision-making body. So that, that's where I stand on that. Okay. Uh, Councilor Lube, anything more to add? I, I'm just trying to think about it in relation to our other boards and committees and, you know, sitting on them and if there's decisions um, that they would make that would be in the authority of the city manager. I mean, I don't think those kinds of decisions would normally come to council anyway. And so I'm trying to figure out splitting the hairs, like the concerns about overstepping. I think the concern is overstepping the authority to be able to, to make rules for the city. And I'm trying to, again, split the hairs and figure out where the concern is when the city manager um, or the police chief would have the authority without us anyway. Um, just trying to figure it out. And I appreciate the conversation. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to understand the arguments on both sides because I'm certainly open to this conversation. Councillor Anderson. You're on mute, sir. <laughs> yeah, Gabby. Um, my impression is, is that it's an advisory board, just like the other ones. I, that was how I, in my mind, it was set up. So, um, I guess I guess the wording that we have in here would work either way, but I consider it an advisory. So I think the, I'm I'm going to make one um, just make sure that our uh, our council understands that one of the critiques that um, that I think, and I've gotten a fair bit of feedback on, is that you know we're, we're watering down by, by choosing, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do this, but by choosing to move it, like change the name to advisory board and change their decision making to advisory only, which to me that's what we would be doing. If we're gonna change, 
if we're going to the, go to the point of calling an advisory board, it should be reflected that way, and we should be saying that they're going to reach consensus uh, to make a recommendation that then the chief or the city manager would decide to implement or not to implement. That's the change in my mind. We, we would be we would be taking the authority instead of saying if this commission comes to consensus we shall implement it we're saying it'll be considered and maybe implemented so i i just want to be crystal clear because part of what in in my proposal of this structure originally was to try to move and and put this commission in a in a place of having some um some some level not a com not a complete level of control but some level of ability to make meaningful decisions for our community in a consensus based way so i just want to lay that out there we can make the de it, it sounds like the council's headed towards uh perhaps making a pretty i mean I, I, it's a change of a few words but it's a pretty major change in the approach to this um, to this commission or to this this body, whatever we're going to call it. So I just want to make sure everybody knows what the ramifications of that are, and that um, we're considering that carefully. Council President Goodhouse. I, for one reason why I think it'd be um, good to have it be advisory is it's similar to the committees and where the elected um, bodies from the public as far as making the final decisions and as quoting you mayor as, as a word you say sometimes that if we go against what our committees um advise us we have to have a pretty good darn reason to go against it so i think um i think that holds true to the same thing when other committees advise us of what to do we look at it and we'd have to have a really good reason of why to go against it and that would be why the final say is we look at it and see if there would be any reason why not to implement it or go forward but it would be the elected body that would give the final decision making on those. What's different here and why, and I, I think this is a, I'm glad you're making that statement because this is a really important concept too. I think somewhere around 90% of what this commission is going to work on are things that would never come to the council. Um, and, and so that's why this really matters. Councilor Lube. Would a compromise be that um, all decisions need to come to council for final authority, regardless of whether or not the city manager or police chief would have the authority to implement it on their own? That that could be a compromise. What does the council think of that, Councilor Newton? You look like you have some yeah, wise. I, advice no, I just add. I don't have anything wise to say. I want Councilor Lube to explain that to me better. I don't, I'm not <laughs> nothing wise. Nothing wise. <laughs> No, so the way that it's worded right now as a transformation commission is that if there is consensus and it's within the city manager or police chief authority, um, they would go ahead and implement it. Um, moving to a more advisory capacity, in theory, would say the board would make a recommendation to the city manager and city um, police chief, and they could choose whether or not to um, initiate it. My compromise would say that anything that would have consensus would come to council for direction to the police chief and the city manager to give away, or I guess to restrict the possibility of the city manager or police chief, I think, being able to say no without it going to council first. City manager Wine, you want to add to this, it looked like? I just wanted to comment that part of the Part of the consensus process that's embedded in this proposal includes the city manager or the city attorney and the police chief. So if the commission reaches consensus, then presumably the police chief and the city attorney are on board. I, I find it hard to imagine that they wouldn't proceed to implement that kind of a decision if they were part of the consensus process. I think the fact that the definition of the consensus is not 15 out of 15 votes is what some people are raising as sort of a question is where it comes from. Council President, uh, Council President Goodhouse. I like uh, Councilor Lube's uh, uh, consideration. I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of that, that method. Councilor Lube, you had more to say too? It has left my brain. Councilor Newton.
Um, yeah, I, I I hear what the city manager is saying about consensus, but I, I suppose there could be a time where the police chief is in the minority um, or the city attorney's in the minority. So, um, you know, and, and, and I don't want to, people to be feeling like their hands are tied, but I also feel like, I, I think I like Councillor Lube's approach. I'm leaning towards that because then, you know, we get some, you know, we get some opportunity to, uh, as the electeds get some opportunity to direct or prioritize or something like that. And I, you know, I, I do want to make sure that the people that are on this board feel like, you know, they can, they can make a difference here. But, um, yeah, so I'm pondering, uh, sorry. Can I, can I offer an upgrade to Councillor Loop's proposal um, or just a modification to it slightly? Because I like it too, but let's say, what, what about this? Let's try this on. Um, what if we were to say that the city manager or city attorney will implement whatever the recommendations are um, from consensus, but if they don't, or if they're not planning to, that would then come to council. So if the if the commission makes a recommendation, then the chief or the the city manager will implement uh, if they want to, or if they're if they plan to. But if they were to choose not to, then it would have to come to council for consideration. What is the thought on that, Councillor Lube? I guess my question would also be to a certain extent, I think, um, you know, this is an incredibly important document and a, a board or commission that we're taking very seriously. And I, I would ask what we would also want council participation and engagement to be, because having everything comes through does um, engage the council in a way, because sitting yeah. on the board is only one counselor. And so it would keep us involved and in the loop. Um, and so my question would be about how we would see council's involvement um, going forward. But I could see that as an alternative. I, I may withdraw my amend or my suggested upgrade. Maybe it's really a downgrade. Council President Goodhouse. I agree with that comment. I think that once the at the conclusion of the advisory um, committee, that by bringing the presentation and, and bringing it to council, it gives more of a spotlight on on the final decisions that can be communicated and voted on as a, as a whole and looked at and implemented rather than maybe something that just got implemented by the city manager or the police chief by doing a final presentation it's something that people can view and watch the process um, we can have members of the media there and it, we can go through and as a whole rather than pieces maybe go to one department and pieces go to us just the whole whole process comes to us youth councilor calderon Uh, yeah, so I would think having everything go to council after the commission reaches a consensus. The only worry that I would have about your updated proposal to Councillor Lube's proposal is that if the chief or city attorney is in the minority and then they don't implement it, it's almost like they're they're like abusing their powers by going against the consensus consensus because they already voted no and then they're voting no again. I don't know if that was very poorly explained. I hope you understand what I'm saying. But I yeah, did. I would support having everything come to council. It feels like veto power. Okay, so we have a proposal on the table. Let's try to land this one first. Um, so the decision, the proposal from Councillor Lube uh, can everybody support that? Do I have thumbs from everybody? Okay, so we have we have support for that. Now, with that change, what does that mean for the title of the group? Is it the advisory board or is it the transformation commission? Can it be the transformation board? <laughs> Transformation Advisory Board. Add. I think we need to have public safety. I, w I was going to suggest the, the public safety board, and one of the reasons I suggest that is that may morph into something um, when the when this work is done. You know, we may morph it into something else. So that was what I was thinking. Anyway, the public public safety board or public right. safety advisory board? Yes, yes, the latter advisory board. Yes. Okay. So what you originally proposed. Okay, do we have 
Do we have thumbs for that one? Thumbs up, yes. Public Safety Advisory Board. Councilor Lube, you, you. I'm fine with it. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see your thumb, so I wanted to double check. Okay, there, there it is. Okay, got it. Um, staff are, and City Manager Wine, I, I, I didn't ask this, but I assume you guys are taking notes on our decisions for this and we'll get the documents we updated. Are. Okay. Um, so, Councillor Newton, let you had a number of other proposals around reorganizing um, some of the sections or some of the topical areas. Um, does everybody support Councillor Newton's suggestions that things be reorganized into, you know, it's essentially things that require federal or, you know, legislative change that we would be advocating for, things that Tigard has direct control over. We actually had a discussion about doing this at one time. Um, is, is everybody in support of that? Okay. <clears throat> so we have we have consensus on that. Councilor Newton, other, were there, were there the any other, the things other piece that I thought would be helpful when I was reading through the descriptions? I think it would be important, um, and maybe we were planning to do this and I missed it, but I think it would be important to go through and, you know, vet these out a little bit more. Um, I think more information could be provided by working with whoever the chief would think, maybe some of the officers, TPOA or command staff or something, to really vet out where we are as a community on some of these things so that uh, the going into it, the um, advisory board has a clear picture of, for example, where we are on no knock warrants, where we are on use of force, you know, what that looks like in our community now, because um, I think that would be important to, to uh, have going forward. And I think the people, the police could be a valuable resource in helping us with that. So we, a suggestion. <laughs> Uh, we, can we can certainly do that. do that. We actually yeah, took yeah. that out um, in prior drafts. We had a current, a current status section in each one, and I think that was removed um, in some dr drafts, maybe in late July. But it could certainly something like that could certainly be added back in. Um, is Chief McAlpine on the on the call, or do I see we have another command staff member present? No, I, I, Rogers? Chief McAlpine oh, is here. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Thoughts on, on that uh, suggestion from Councillor Newton? Um, it's always been intended that there's an educational piece. And so just um, when that should occur and how much did you want to put in the document ahead of time to advise people. But that's what we've always um, kind of presented to all of you is that we do think it, there's an educational component that's very important just to see where we're starting from and then where where concerns are. Um, so how that how that actually looks, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty flexible. Uh, but, I, but I think the education piece, I, I do agree uh, with Councillor Newton about uh, putting these in their category. So again, it's very clear what people's expectation is, what they can can change, and what they can advocate for. I think that'll be helpful for a lot of people who are um, kind of following this committee along. Thanks for volunteering to take the lead on reorganizing them that way. Council President Goodhouse. I agree with putting the notation of what, what we do already or don't do as far as um, similar to what the Chief said. If anyone's from the public viewing this document that may not go through the beyond the, the advisory um, board, it'd be good for them to know what, what, what we do, we don't do already. Okay, so um, I think we've got consensus to move forward there. Uh, we've, Councilor Newton, have we worked through your feedback and suggested changes? Yes, to this point you have. Although okay. I just want to reiterate, I, I do think the um, adding the to the proposals, the status should go, we should do that before we um, we convene the, the board. Okay. So that can uh, that can be put back in. Um, you Staff, you may want to take what we had in a draft probably three or four weeks ago. It might be helpful to start back with what was there. 
um, at least as a starting point, might save you some time. Um, Youth Councilor Calderon, do you have other other feedback or a list like Councilor Newton had of, of specific things that you want to see changed or have you said your piece? I've said my piece. Um, what other counselors are saying are making uh, thoughts happen in my, in my brain. So it is very, uh, as we go along, I might have more comments. That's fine. Counselor Anderson. Good. Counselor Lube. I have nothing on top of what we've already discussed. <laughs> Council President Goodhouse. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, staff, what questions do you have from either our discussion or direction that's either confusing or that you're concerned about or any any other things that we need to cover on this topic tonight? I'm going to ask City Attorney Rahala and Chief McAlpine for any additional comments or questions. Uh, I have none, Council. I'll defer to the Chief. And I have none. Crystal clear. And Chief, do you, what are, what are your, I'm now kind of just asking for your opinion, but do, are you comfortable with and, and think that the changes that we're talking about making, particularly to the decision-making structure, make sense and um, will be potentially more uh, supported by our frontline officers? Um, perhaps. I, my concern is um, the slippery slope and where this goes uh, when it's, it's left to the council for final decision on, on uh, policies again. As we've seen in, in larger cities where uh, the council is saying you cannot do certain tactics or you can't, we, we don't want you doing this. Um, it's it's the concern of the unknown where this goes um, and that's all uh, as long as I'm able to articulate and express any concerns that I may have um, then we can and have that discussion we can go from there that that's my only um, slight location so chief um, oh, sorry well I was going to say chief and follow up to that um, my hope is that this is at least better than having it lie strictly with the commission but maybe Maybe that maybe it's not. I don't I don't know what your thoughts are on that, or if you have other thoughts. No, I, I, I've always had a confidence in the process, and I think coming if there if there are, um, I got a lot of feedback. Sorry, if there is a lot of, uh, I don't think we're going to go far unless this recommendation is clear out of left field. I, I'd anticipate a very collaborative process and a very vetted out process, and and I. Um, I welcome that with this community uh, on what that might look like. And should I have any serious concerns, I, I would like to think that I could talk to the uh, committee first and be able to either bring in the experts or some, some foundational reasons to why I'm apprehensive about making that change. And if there's still um, uh, a consensus to do so, it, just short of an officer safety and ethical reason, um, you know, I'm, I'm open to at least exploring those opportunities and to work with TPOA if there's any collective bargaining um, impact. So uh, I want to remain open in this process to exactly hearing what the concerns are of our community. And I, I think TPOA will feel like they've definitely been heard, and I appreciate that. Councilor Newton. Uh, yeah, really quick, Chief. So my concern was with um, the the board or the yeah the board making a recommendation on a policy or directing a change that you know that might not be something that you would support and if we're saying they have to be the changes have to be made that made me a little bit nervous for the reasons that you just articulated but I'm not you and I'm not living in the world of you trying to implement policies or put policies in place that work for our community and your officers. So that was one of the reasons I was a bit concerned because I thought, what if we get into a situation where a policy is recommended and we are saying it has to be implemented? Um, so uh, that I just wanted to say that was kind of my concern, but I was kind of coming at it from the other side. So yeah, and that's I mean, Councillor Newton, that's always been a balance in trying to figure out how to 
how to make this work. I mean, when I when I was thinking about the design of it, my sense, and I've I've said this to TPOA, I've said it to the chief, and I'll say it here again, is that if if the if the uh, TPOA representative on this group and the chief of police or her designee uh, cannot get the city attorney, the municipal court judge, a city councilor, or anyone else on the commission to agree with their position on something, that might be a reason for them to reflect on whether their position is the right position or not. And I, I will state that again publicly, but that was part of the design, was to try to force consensus and also make sure there's an appropriate kind of check and balance there. Council President Goodhouse, you had a question or a comment? Just to follow up from what the chief was saying, that's why I, I like the advisory role in coming to council where if there is anything that's glaringly um, out of left field or something that we might have to have additional comments on that as a, a governing body, we could almost that council go through that process and, 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 and look in more in depth if something maybe was me maybe being more uh, a temporary fix, but may have more of a long-term uh, implication. So that's why I like the advisory role and coming to council for the final overlook and say. Yeah, with that said, I think it's a balance. Like we're not gonna, we don't wanna be in the business of reviewing and approving every single police department policy and telling the chief how to do her job. So that, I mean, that's, that's the balance here is how do we, how do we have this advisory board um, work through the the issues that they need to work through for our community and still maintain uh, the operational integrity and decision making of the police department's leadership team and the city's leadership team. This is a balance and our intent is to not have this group or the city council running the moment by moment operations and policies of the the, the police department. That's not the intent here. And if we end up in that situation, we're going to have to correct it because that's not that's not what we're headed for here. Uh, okay. Any other comments from council and staff? Uh, I guess we we're at a point where we're asking if you had any other questions or comments, and then we asked you some questions. Anything further? Um, oh, I guess. Go ahead. Okay, well, the other I think the thing we were thinking might happen tonight was if you saw a proposal that you felt like was ready to move forward, that we'd be asking you to adopt it so we would move on. But it sounds like we need to bring you another draft um, for your approval. And our plan would be that at the, the next meeting that you would have would be September 8th. And from there, the, the steps I was talking about earlier regarding refining the selection process, contacting potential facilitators, developing education and storytelling events are all proceeding and will continue to do so. Okay, so we're not slow. I mean, I guess what I want to make sure of, and, and I, I would check with the council on this, um, it seems like we, we plan to adopt what we've talked about, and I would like to ask that in the, in the um, just so that we're not slowing things down by multiple weeks, that the the work in addition to what you were describing, City Manager Wine, I might have missed it, but um, will the the beginning work on the selection of the like the caucus process can that continue while before we adopt this formally? I I would well, I would prefer that we wait until we've got this adopted formally because people might want to look at this document before they make a determination about whether or not they're going to uh part you know get engaged well then i'd recommend that we have a meeting next week because i don't i don't want to i don't think it makes sense to wait two more weeks for these kind of edits city manager wine sorry you were going to say something i'm sorry from a process standpoint um at the moment we don't have any agenda items planned for september 1st and that's next week's meeting and if you asked us to draft and schedule a meeting so that this was before you next week you could do that um, if you if you were to have adopted this proposal tonight, we would have opened the application process at the end of the week and close it a week later. And that would mean that we'd be collecting community feedback and applications through the middle of September the 15th um, and then finalizing potentially finalizing membership on the one of the last weeks of September. So 
if we brought you a draft, then we'd be pushing things out a week. But I, what we're envisioning is that month of September is the application process and finalizing the selection process. You Just have a to timeline. Sorry, Marty, I couldn't hear that. Say it again. I was trying to give you a sense of the timeline. Yeah, thank you. Youth Councilor Calderon? Yeah, as far as the timeline goes, um, obviously we can't adopt something that hasn't been written yet, so we can't adopt a proposal now. So I think that uh, we should probably have a meeting next week so we can get this process get going as soon as we can because we shouldn't wait uh, to push the timeline back another two weeks. Okay. Um, other council thought on this? Um, I just I just don't think that you know us taking two weeks to and inserting two more weeks of delay into this is necessary. So that's my that's my concern. And and we can meet next week, Councillor Newton. I understand your your feedback, and I can live with that. But I don't think we should go two weeks. Council President Goodhouse. I agree with next week. I'm I'm on board for that. Okay. Is everybody on board for that? Sure. I just think this is too important to rush. So I, I, I'm fine with next week, but I think it's too important to rush. Got it. Um, and I, I mean, I, I understand it feels like rushing. My perspective would have been that, you know, we, we didn't make any edits to that part of the process at all. So um, it, to me, it's not super presumptive. And by the time people would be applying, I guess, Councillor Newton, you're right, because City Manager Wine is saying we'd be soliciting input or applications this Friday. So I, I get that. That would be um, not probably the proper timeline. I, I, I stand corrected, and I appreciate the feedback. Youth Councillor Calderon? Would it be possible to have um, city staff prepare everything for the application so we could have it approved and open on Wednesday of next week so we don't have to wait? until like Friday just to speed it up like a tiny bit not to rush you guys or anything but if it was ready to go this week my guess is it can be ready next Wednesday but city manager wine uh, you know um, I'd love to be able to commit to as fast a timeline as a council would like and it takes it takes us a couple of days to turn things around so having you adopt something on a Tuesday night and opening it on a Wednesday is probably more aggressive than we, I can commit to. But I understand the question and all I can say is we will do our very best to turn around an application process as soon as possible after the council adopts. Council President Goodhouse? Looking at the calendar, would we want to open it up after Labor Day weekend? I know if that, I mean, we're in COVID time so people aren't really doing as many maybe activities over Labor Day, but would we want to open the application process afterwards so it's not, the application process isn't during a, a holiday weekend? It's going to be open for a couple of weeks, isn't it? All right, okay. Yes. I thought maybe you said a week. I misunderstood that part. All right. Uh, City Manager Wine, any other questions or follow up on this? Uh, not that I have. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, we have no non-agenda items. City Manager Wine, do you have an administrative report? I do have an administrative report, Council. It's fairly brief. Um, so as usual, I'm trying to incorporate into the administrative report an opportunity to give you updates about that work that we're doing and the accomplishments that we're seeing. Let's see, you know about the public safety advisory board. You've been working on that tonight. Um, Southwest Corridor, a couple of you reported on already related to your um, meeting with TriMet. Um, I think that um, Mr. Asher, our community development director, has been giving you regular updates in the weekly newsletter and that project is at 30% design and that represents a significant amount of work to be reviewing those plans in our, in our engineering and our uh, planning work group. Um, the City Hall remodel is underway and actually nearing its conclusion. It's been in progress for several months and we're anticipating the completion of the remodel of City Hall in mid-September, so it's in a few weeks pretty soon. And um, I know that not everybody will get to see that, but um, that's something that's been underway and if you haven't been to City Hall lately, you'll be able to see the results of that soon. 
Um, last week I mentioned a, um, an internal survey for all city staff related to COVID-19 and also about how we're all doing our work um, in the face of the pandemic. We closed out the survey with 224 responses of our workforce of um, it's about 330 people. So um, the goal of that was to check in with staff about how they're feeling and what they need to be able to do their work. And my hope is to give you more about the results of that internal survey next week. Um, let's see. Um, most of you know that the deadline to file for the city council races closed this past Monday, and we have um, seven candidates who qualified to run for the city council on on the ballot coming up this fall, and we'll be publishing very soon um, just the uh, filing documents from the seven candidates who have filed. And then finally, um, you might have seen in council mail an invitation from. Um, our community development director, Kenny Asher, um, with a request for, from staff for council to record short thank you videos for our community advisors for the Universal Plaza. So um, I think the request was, we were hoping that you would be able to stay for just a few minutes after this meeting to be able to record um, thank you vid videos for the folks who are going to be participating as design advisors. So folks are, they're applying now to be, to be giving input about the way the Universal Plaza will be designed and we would really appreciate the chance for, to have you thank um, the folks who are volunteering to be part of that process. So if you're willing to stay on for just a moment at the, after the close of the meeting, we'd really appreciate your help. And um, Kenny and I can also stay on to just share again with you the possible thank you statements that they that were suggested if that would be helpful. That's all I have for administrative report. And get your haikus in. I tweeted mine today. I saw your tweet, Councilor Newton. The haikus are great and they're rolling in, so we'd welcome more. Is there a deadline on the haikus? I gotta write mine. I don't remember right offhand. I would say if you can... weren't watching the Spark conversation, Councillor Newton and I challenged the rest of you to all write haikus with us. On a, we'll get the I saw, to you. I saw some yeah. reference to this. Is there a specific topic? Yes, yes it's Universal, Universal Plaza. Plaza. Universal Plaza. Oh. So Universal Plaza haiku. I don't know that I'll ever write that on a list of things to do again, but I got it on this time. Great. Thank I you, have Council. my reminder. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we do not have an executive session uh, scheduled. We don't need to continue the one we were having. We completed it. So City Manager Wine, are we, are we adjourning the meeting formally and then recording these or how, what is the, or are we recording them during the meeting? Yes. Yes, please. I mean, it'd be fine to adjourn the meeting. I think these are, this is an official. Um, this is an official business of the council, and it will just take a few minutes. Okay. So, is there a motion for adjournment? Councilor Lube, I move to adjourn. Councilor Newton, I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, roll call vote, please. Oh. Councilor Newton. Counsel yes. Yeah. Councilor Lube. Yes. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Mayor Snyder? Yes. Council President Goodhouse? Yes. Okay, we are adjourned and we will record our videos now.